I keep track of all my expenses in this Google Sheet, which doesn't include my salary or investment returns. In 2021, I spent $6,300 but profited $234. And in 2022, I spent $8,000 and only lost $75. And what if I told you that anyone can do this and all you need is a free carousel account? In this video, I reveal how I bought everything I wanted and still net close to $0. Hi, if you're new to my channel, which you probably are since I only have 500 subscribers, my name is Aaron and I'm now 25 and I'm going to retire before the age of 29. Subscribe to follow me on my financial independence journey. There are some things that hold their value better than others. For example, food, transport and holidays are categories where once you spend the money, you can never get it back. For me, I try to find ways to avoid them or reduce the costs. Whereas non-perishable items like a TV, computer and clothes will hold their value for longer. So I'm using that to my advantage. But first, let's talk about food and transport. If you're a young adult and still living with your parents, food and transport are probably your biggest monthly expenses. Spend as much as your broke uni school days and keep lifestyle inflation to a minimum. Think of your first few years of working as University 2.0. So continue to take public transport to work. You can even use their healthy 365 points to offset your public transport costs a bit. Last time it was better. I used to be able to fully cover my transport costs using the healthy 365, so it was super lucrative for me. Now I'm getting about $8 a month from the app. So it's still worth doing for me since I'm exercising every day anyway. Interestingly, out of my four family members, my mom and dad, who are probably both millionaires, are still clocking their steps and 30 minutes of exercise every day. My uncle, who owns a bungalow, so probably is also super rich, is also clocking his steps even though he doesn't have to. Only my younger sibling, still in university and not earning money, isn't doing it. So it's really quite interesting to see, even within my family, how each of us view clocking steps to get $8 a month. Now you may be wondering, what about food? Doesn't Aaron have to pay for food? If you've watched my living on $6,500 a month video, you know that I only eat at home or pack lunch to work. This came out recently on the mothership. K limits the number of times he eats outside and brings lunch from home. He saves $200 a month on average. That's a huge number, $2,400 a year. So bringing lunch to work is more common than I thought. Actually, amongst my colleagues, I'm the only one doing it. But it's okay to spend on food when you want to. Maybe you can start bringing your lunch to work one day a week and then add more days when you feel comfortable. Now as for discretionary spending, I'm gonna teach you the art of flipping. This is my spending in the month of February this year. I still have a net loss of $360, but once I sell my Samsung tablet, I can net a profit of about $100 this month. You have probably heard of Carousel. In case you haven't, it's basically eBay for Singapore. It is my second favorite app. The first is obviously YouTube, because I can smash the like buttons and subscribe to channels. However, you can't just buy anything on Carousel and expect the value to remain the same until you sell it. You need to buy below market value items. But how do you find that out? For example, I want to buy a camera, the Sony A7C. I search it on Carousel and look for the cheapest one available. But I don't immediately buy the cheapest one. If you do this, you might not end up netting $0 a year. I bought my M1 MacBook Air for $550, which was $200 below market value. So if you just buy the cheapest one you see, you'll probably still make a slight loss eventually when you sell it. Which is fine if you urgently need the item, just go for it. Otherwise, if it's something that you don't really need, you just gotta be patient and wait for better deals. So after you find the cheapest listing, go and like the listing. Also, like a few more of the cheapest listings. When it gets sold, you know that buyers are willing to buy at that price. But after a while, if you look at your likes page and find that none of the cheapest listings have been sold, that means you should buy the item for a lot cheaper. By the way, you can only see whether the listing is sold or not if you like it. If you don't like it and it's sold, you won't be able to search for it again. Also, if the cheapest listing is a few weeks old already, it's also a sign that it's still too expensive because nobody's buying it. Before I bought my M1 MacBook Air, I saw someone buy an M1 MacBook MacBook Air for $680. So one fine day when my MacBook listing popped up at $550, I immediately snagged it. Even though I put my life on the line to travel to the most dangerous place in Singapore, it was well worth it. For tech items, as you know, the price depreciates immediately when you buy it. For example, the previous generation of Samsung phones are about half its retail price already. You can get a Samsung S22 Ultra for about $600 now. The point is, if you want the value of your items to last longer, don't buy the latest products, especially new tech products where prices drop from the sky like grapes. A reading a drop like um, a grapes, no? Can drop, 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 drop. When you buy tech products secondhand, there is more risk of damage. When I bought my camera, I didn't check if all the buttons were working. So I forked out another $140 to replace the camera's motherboard. 
So all the money I saved buying lower than market value vanished into thin air. At least I used it a lot and even did one photography gig with it and made back some cash. The second mistake was the Samsung Tab S6 Lite. The problem was there was screen ghosting. So that means if you show something on the screen for too long, the image of it will stay on the screen even when you change the screen. I reported it to the seller and told him to pay for the repair costs. Obviously the seller didn't and I just had to absorb the repair cost myself. In the end, I sold the tablet and still made $48. So two lessons here. Be sure to press all the buttons. Make sure the screen has no lines or dead pixels. Make sure the speakers work too. Also, bring a power bank to test if the charging works. Second lesson is to buy stuff that is $100 to $200 less than market value. Just the previous Friday, I sold my 28-inch monitor for the same price I bought it for and I used the monitor for a little over a year. That means I used it for free. So I could even profit after using. For example, this GH4 which is a Panasonic camera, I profited $50 from it. By the way, I find great joy after I sell the item after using it for a while for the same price and even more joy when I profit from it. I get it, not everyone wants to play this game of waiting and buying the cheapest listing. Also, it's honestly quite hard work to study and wait for a good deal. But this is the extent I'll go to to spend a net $0 in a year. But I guess that's the appeal of buying brand new in box from the shop. I'm not willing to do that so that I can keep my overall spending as low as possible. Also so that I can buy whatever I want. In fact, now I want the newer M2 MacBook Air with the new design. I can probably use my current MacBook for another year and still profit eventually when I sell it. So this is how I keep my items up to date while spending so little. So look for 2 to 4 year old tech products. Because it should be cheap enough but not too old. Sell one then buy one. This means selling one item before you buy another item. Honestly, this is easier said than done. Even I don't practice this regularly. Aaron just keeps it at the back of his mind to prevent himself from buying too much stuff. Only buy things that you know you will use monthly. I bought a mountain bike for $800 and only used it 3 times and sold it for $550. That was the biggest loss I incurred so far. So before you buy stuff, ask yourself are you at least gonna use it monthly? Otherwise, it will have a high chance of sitting at home collecting dust. I want to also bring up the free item section on Carousel. On rare occasions, there will be something that you actually need from there. Recently, I got a vintage keyboard from there. The Microsoft Natural Keyboard Pro. And no, it's not a piece of trash. All the keys work and I'm still using it every day. If you are a keyboard enthusiast, you know a vintage keyboard is terrible to type, but it's still pretty cool. The IBM one still costs $400. When I have some profit, I use it to offset the non-sellable items like food and transport and going out with friends. However, travel is the only thing that makes it hard to make your yearly spending net zero. Just enjoy your trip with the money you save from secondhand flipping. I managed to net zero for the past few years and profited in 2021 because COVID prevented us from traveling. I still buy anything I want and am still able to invest almost my entire salary. If you're interested in my investment portfolio giving me 1,000 dividends a month, watch this video here.